Hey, welcome everybody to our new series called The Upside Down Kingdom. And I love this series because it really helps us have a, a more Christ-centered worldview compared to our normal cultural worldview that we run into everywhere that we go. So here's a little story for you. I played a sport in high school, and, and because of that, I was basically in the weightlifting room often. And during my first period, I had my PE class with other athletes, and, and our teacher was the football coach, and he had high expectations for all of us. And there was one thing specifically that became a pretty important part of, of this PE class, and it was powerlifting. And I'm talking about those exercises, those 400 pounds, solid steel, human beings doing the Olympics. Well, that was a big part of what we did in the weight room each morning. And after some time, a competition kind of arose. And whoever lifted the most was clearly the coolest 15-year-old on the planet Earth. And it was like, it came naturally to us to want to be the strongest, the best, and the most powerful person in the room. And myself, like, it never, I was always like really skinny and so it never really worked for me, but at least I could point out who was the most powerful person in the room. And power looks different for everyone though. For you, power might look like being the one who can captivate a group of people with a story and be the center of attention. Or it might be the power to influence what your friend group does over the weekend or to influence how you handle the drama that pops up in the group. Or power might look like having a later curfew or finally getting your driver's license. Or maybe you have an idea of the kind of power that you want, but you don't have yet. Think about it for a second. Maybe you dreamt of being your captain of your sports team. Or maybe you wanted to be first chair in the band. Or, or maybe you've thought about running for president of student council. Or maybe you are a sixth grader or a freshman or a sophomore and you imagine the kind of power that comes with being like an upperclassman. Oh, those eighth graders. Oh, those juniors and seniors. Or maybe you took the risk and applied to be a manager of, of your shift at McDonald's. And the idea of being in a place of power or authority, which is someone who has more power than you do, uh, can be exciting. And, and it can be exciting because it can make us feel important or respected or even intimidating to other people. Having power gives us a sense of having a little bit of control. And, and who doesn't want that? And if we're honest with ourselves, we'd all like to feel powerful because it puts us in control above someone else. But if you have ever been in a place of power, you know it doesn't always go the way that you imagine, right? Like even if you have it, there's always someone else who has more power than you. Or, or you aren't always sure what to do with that power that you have. And it isn't always as great as you think it is going to be. That's sometimes how power is. And that leaves us with some complicated feelings about power and the people who have it and those who don't and about why we want it and what to do when we actually have it. And maybe we feel like it just never quite turns out the way that we think it should. In other words, competing for and then gaining power is complicated. So what do we do about it all? Power and authority have been around from the very beginning, and it wasn't designed to be as complicated as it, it sometimes feels. The opening part of the Bible is called Genesis, or the origin. And this book of origins, who people believe was written actually by Moses, is, it's about the creation of all things, including, including human beings. In it, it is also written something incredibly important when it comes to our idea of authority or power. And this is in the very first chapter of Genesis. This is Genesis 1.26. It says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and, and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So that line, so that they may rule, it was all written about human beings from the very beginning. According to the writer, humans were literally put on this planet and given power or authority over the rest of creation. Humans, you and me, were designed by God to have traits of God. That's what it means to have God's image in us. And it's what God's image and likeness in us that we are to demonstrate and practice authority. 
So fast forward to today, and it's easy to see how humans have used power and authority for good. But it's also easy to see the way humans have also turned things upside down from how they were originally intended to be. Power has been used to liberate or help and, and oppress or harm and, and its entire groups of people. Power has been used to bring peace and start wars that have wiped out millions. Power has been used to create resources that meet people's needs, and it's been used irresponsibly in lots of cases. So even though power has, was a part of the deal at creation, humans haven't always used it well. But that wasn't the case with Jesus. Jesus turned the idea of power upside down. Jesus flipped the idea of power upside down in a way that people didn't expect or know what to do with. He did things way differently than the religious leaders of his time. Where other leaders fought to be seen as increasingly powerful or by, by putting others down, Jesus chose to do the exact opposite. Not only that, he did something none of them could pull off. He was killed by those leaders because they didn't like the way that he did things. But then in the biggest power flex possible, he came back to life. In fact, just so that there were no questions, Jesus actually made it really clear what kind of power he had when he said this in Matthew 28. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I mean, there's really no room for questions when it comes to Jesus's authority. He's like, hey, just in case you were wondering after the whole coming back to life thing that I pulled off, I have been given all authority over everything. And this is good news because it means that he is the perfect example of what being powerful looks like. Jesus could have used his power to put down or oppress other people, but he used it to do things people didn't expect. He set out to create an, an upside down kingdom where power was used in the way that God had always planned for it. In a culture that was used to things being a certain way, it was upside down that he used his power. And this is how, to show that he honored and valued women, to prove that he wasn't okay with corrupt and evil systems, to heal people who were sick, to, to, change out with the out, to, to hang out with the outcasts of society, to forgive people who had wronged him, to include people who most powerful people ignored. Jesus, he, he never used his power to make others feel small, hurt, or oppressed. His is, is an example of power being turned upside down, but also it's a picture of power used perfectly. No matter what your experience has been with people in authority or whether you have, have or haven't handled power so well yourself, Jesus' example shows us how power is supposed to be used and what it's supposed to look like. He has all authority and he is an authority that we can follow and model when we are given a little bit of power ourselves. He shows us what power and authority in an upside down kingdom can look like and should look like. Jesus turned the idea of power completely upside down. So what does this mean for you and me as we go through life trying to get this power th thing right? Well, really the place we can all start by is choosing to rethink the way that we think about power and authority. Why? Because whether we're people who push back against the authority in our lives or people who are looking for opportunities to gain more power than we currently have, chances are we have seen or used power in a way that doesn't reflect the way God intended for it to be used. So by rethinking it, we can choose to look to Jesus' example of authority and the way that God has always intended for power and authority to be used. If you're ready to take a new approach to the way that you think about authority, here are a couple ways to start, all right? Number one, think about Jesus. Before going after power or going against the people who have authority over us, we should think about the things that we just talked about that Jesus said and did. We should ask ourselves, what made Jesus a good authority figure? And how did he use his power? Then we'll be able, to better, be able to better know what to do when we are given power of any kind. We'll also know the kinds of authority figures that are worth following. 
And number two, rethink how you use the power that you have. Chances are you have at least some power and influence yourself. Think about ways that you can leverage your power for good. Maybe you can be the one to invite that loner kid at school into the conversation. Maybe you can use your influence to stop the joke when someone else is hurt by it. Maybe you can be the person who, who puts an end to gossip and shuts down rumors. Don't just talk about it in life group. Be about it in real life. And number three, rethink about the authority figures in your life. So take some time to think about the coaches, the teachers, the parents, the, the life group leaders, the bosses, and whoever else seems to have some kind of power in your life. Maybe you love the way that they use their power, or maybe you don't. Either way, learn to look for the good. Maybe they believe deeply in your potential. Maybe they defend you when you need it most. Maybe they taught you valuable life lessons. The truth is that authority can be annoying, but when you think about the example that Jesus gave us and you line it up with the ways that people around you use their power, are there things that match up? Because by, by rethinking about the authorities in your life, you can change the way that you see them or even change the way that you treat those with power moving forward. Now, just to be clear, this does not mean that you should ignore the reality of, of harmful authority or the harmful ways that people use their power. There is a difference between authority that's annoying and authority that's harmful. Anyone who uses their power in ways that are harmful to you, someone else or, or themselves, is, it's, it's not an, using authority in ways that align with Jesus' example. In fact, Jesus spoke out against this kind of authority time and time again. So if you're experiencing the use of power in harmful ways, the best thing to do is to speak up. In fact, my hope is that this, this group of people is the safest place in the world for you to talk about anything. So say something if you are in a position where authority is being used in harmful ways. So yes, we might get annoyed with those in authority or even find ourselves wanting power in ways that might not be beneficial. But we can be confident that in Jesus, we have a perfect example of the way power and authority were intended to be used. He used power in an upside down way. As we go about our day-to-day -day lives and as we get older and find ourselves in positions of authority more often, we can choose to rethink the way that we think about power and authority. And when we do, we may see our perspectives on people like our parents or guardians or bosses or teachers or coaches or life group leaders, and we'll start to see those begin to change. When we look for the good in our teachers, we may find our class gets better. When we see that our coaches, when we see them in a positive light, we may find ourselves running harder and less tempted to talk back to them. When we see the way that our parents sacrifice for us, uh, taking out the trash won't feel so annoying to you. The way that we think about authority can actually change how we experience authority and how people in authority interact with us. Plus, we'll have a better picture of what good authority is supposed to be like when we're in positions of authority and power someday. So let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you so much that we can talk about authority. We thank you for sending Jesus to give us a perfect example of what authority is supposed to look like. And I just pray that we can be that example just like he was for us. And I just pray that we can follow after Jesus' steps when it comes to authority and leadership and all those other roles that we play within our lives. Give us wisdom, give us direction, and may we follow after you, Jesus. I pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks, guys. We'll see you guys next week as we talk about David. Love you guys. Bye.